Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a horror thriller film, Barbarians. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. On a rainy night, a woman named Tess is driving toward a house that she rented online. Details of the lock on the house are seen in her phone messages. She inputs an incorrect pin at first, but after a few tries, the lockbox opens. However, when she inspects the box, the keys are nowhere to be found. Tess disappointingly contacts the agents in charge of the house rentals, but there is no response. She rings the doorbell out of frustration, and surprisingly the lights inside the house turn on. Tess is greeted by a man named Keith who just woke up from a peaceful slumber, and both of them are confused by the situation. Tess confirms the details of the house information, and Keith explains that he rented it on another website. The rain escalates to a thunderstorm, so the gentleman invites Tess inside to be comfortable. Tess excuses herself to find the bathroom, and Keith finds his phone to confirm the details with Tess. Inside the bathroom, Tess sees the man's hygiene kit and his automatic toothbrush disgustingly charging on the floor. When Tess finishes her smelly business in the bathroom, she is startled by Keith. Keith shows the details of his booking on his phone, and Tess confirms that they booked the same house. Tess plans to find another hotel room, with respect to Keith arriving first at the place. Keith offers that she stays in the house, as he explains that the neighborhood is unsafe. Tess continues to scour the internet for hotel rooms, but unfortunately, she finds nothing available. Keith explains that there is a medical convention happening in the town, so Tess cannot book a hotel room by any chance. Keith proposes that he sleeps on the couch and that Tess can take the room. Tess requests that they should change the sheets first, as she would not sleep on a bed without fresh sheets. However, they could not find new sheets, so Keith washes the sheets in the middle of the night. As Tess unpacks her belongings, she notices that Keith left his wallet on the bedroom dresser, so she quickly inspects it. When she sees his driver's license, she hurriedly takes a photo to keep, just in case. This man turns out to be a criminal. When she finishes unpacking, she goes out to the living room to return the wallet to Keith. Keith thanks her for the gesture, and she excuses herself to take a bath. After she cleans her sexy body up, she sees Keith waiting at the dining table with a bottle of wine. He explains that he waited for her before opening the bottle, as he suspects that Tess does not yet trust him. Seeing him breaking the seal in front of her, she eliminates the suspicion that he might have put a drug on the drink. Keith opens the bottle, and Tess sits with him. He begins the conversation by asking the reason for her visit to the town. Tess tells him that she has an appointment regarding a job interview for a music documentary. Surprisingly, Keith is familiar with a jazz film from the filmmaker, and proposes that he should also be interviewed, as he is one of the founders of a known jazz band. This gains Tess's trust, and it lightens the mood of the conversation. When the sheets are done washing in the laundry, Keith assists her in changing them. Tess thanks him for the lovely night, and Keith proceeds to sleep on the couch as they have agreed upon. In the middle of their slumber, Tess wakes up with her bedroom door wide open, and she hears Keith screaming like he's having a nightmare. She walks up to the agonizing man, and wakes him up to ask if he opened her door. Keith frustratingly says that he did not, so Tess apologizes and goes back to bed. This time she locks her door, to avoid it from disturbing her peaceful sleep. The following morning, Keith realizes that she is running late for her job interview, so she quickly dresses up. On her way out, she notices a letter from Keith on the counter, saying that he went out to do some chores and instructs her to leave the keys in the lockbox. He also says that he had a great night, even if Tess accused him of being a creep who opened her door. Tess smiles at the message, and goes out to put the keys in the lockbox. After that, she looks at their neighbors, and sees that most of the houses are trashed. Here she realizes that she should not have rented the place, as the neighborhood's appearance looks unsafe. The feeling of fear and frustration gets worse when she starts driving. Tess hasn't seen a nice-looking house around the neighborhood, even after a few blocks. A few moments later, she arrives at a coffee shop. The interviewer arrives, and begins asking questions regarding Tess's career and background. At the end of the interview, Tess seems to impress the lady, as she tells Tess to expect a callback tomorrow. When they are about to part ways, the lady asks Tess where she is currently staying. The lady becomes worried, as she knows that the town Tess is staying in is known for being dangerous. Later on, Tess drives back to the rented house. On her way to the door, a creepy old man starts chasing her. The old man screams at her to get out of the house, like he's giving a warning to her. She is extremely terrified, and fortunately, she unlocks the door just in time before the man goes anywhere near her. When she shuts the door, she immediately dials out for help, but the operator says that they have no available units to respond to her distress call. She tries to calm herself out of frustration, as she has nothing else to do. Later on, nature calls, and Tess realizes that she ran out of toilet paper in the bathroom. She goes out to the basement to get a roll of toilet paper. Suddenly, the basement door shuts, locking her inside. She realizes that she left her phone upstairs, so while waiting for Keith, she starts investigating the basement. 
After a few moments of searching, she finds a rope on one of the shelves. She pulls the rope, and it reveals a door to a mysterious hallway. She decides to light up the room by reflecting a mirror to the basement bulb. As she enters the dark, mysterious hallway, she finds a bedroom with a dirty bed and an old camera pointed at it. She's disgusted and terrified, as she suspects that this room is used to film disgusting things. She runs outside the dark room and sees Keith through the small window, waiting on the front porch. Keith helps her open the window, and she hands in the keys to the door. When Tess gets free, she tells Keith about her terrifying discovery in the basement. Tess decides that she wants to leave the house, but Keith asks her to stay, just in case he gets locked out in the basement as he is curious to search the basement. A few moments pass, and there is still no sign of Keith, so Tess decides to fetch him in the basement. She puts a chair on the basement door to prevent it from closing. Tess proceeds to look for Keith in the mysterious room with her phone light, but he is nowhere to be found. She explores the room and finds another door that reveals another staircase going deeper into an alley. Suddenly, she hears Keith screaming for help. When Tess finds Keith, he tells her to be quiet as there is someone else in the house, and this creature bit him, possibly in his smelly part. Suddenly, a disgusting naked creature with her heavy boots hanging out attacks them. The creature is nicknamed The Mother. The film transitions to a male actor named Landlord, happily driving on the side of the beach. He receives a call from his secretaries, informing him that he has been sued for sexual misconduct by a female co-actor. He's devastated by this news as this would harm his career. The following moment, Landlord visits his financial advisor. The man informs him that he would be going bankrupt due to the expensive lawyer fees. The man also advises him to find another wealth advisor as their company would not continue their services with Landlord due to the serious allegations. To make some money, Landler decides to sell some of his properties and flies to another city to check on the properties. It's revealed that Landler is the owner of the house, currently rented to Tess and Keith. Landler visits an office to grab the keys to his property, and he immediately goes to the house. Landler arrives at the house and sees Tess's car parked in front of it. He enters the house and finds Keith and Tess's belongings, so he immediately calls the rental company to report that someone is staying in the house. However, the agent says that the house has not hosted renters for the past weeks. When the night comes, Landlord is invited by his friend to a bar, which gives him a chance to explain himself. However, Landlord is still in denial of the accusations, and he has no plans of owning up to the fault. He comes home drunk and calls his co-actress, begging her to give him a chance to apologize, but he does not receive any response. The following morning, Landlord is hungover from drinking his problems away last night, and he pukes all over the toilet bowl. After that, he continues to search through Keith and Tess's luggage, and he sees Tess's laptop. He continues to search in the basement, hoping to find the people who he's accusing of squatting on his property. He grabs a small knife and a flashlight and proceeds to check the basement. He finds the mysterious room in the basement and sees this as an opportunity to sell the property with a higher value, so he gets a tape measure and begins measuring the dimensions of the hidden room. Landlord also finds the mysterious staircase, and he continues to measure the dark, hidden alley. He seems excited as his property is extremely huge. During this search, he finds a room with a television, and a film of a nursing mother is seen playing on repeat. Suddenly, his tape measure begins rolling back. Accidentally, he lets go of the tape measure and proceeds to run his panicking ass in fear as he hears something chasing after him. Landlord accidentally falls into a pit, and a metal cage door shuts on top of him, trapping him inside the pit. There he meets Tess, and she instructs him to keep quiet. A flashback from the 1980s then shows the previous owner of the house. The neighborhood looks neat and lovely neighbors are seen greeting the man while he's driving. He goes to a grocery store to purchase diapers and materials needed for birthing. He tells the store clerk that he would be assisting his wife with her pregnancy at home. Moments after, we see this man walking up to a woman's house, where he introduces himself as an inspector. He goes to the bathroom to pretend to inspect, and he unlocks a window. It seems like this man plans to enter the house through this small window. Right after that, we see the man's creepy house, and agonizing screams from the woman are heard. It seems like this man has been kidnapping women and trapping them in the basement. Back to the present time, Tess is tying a piece of cloth on Landlord's injured arm. She instructs him to control his temper, as the mother gets easily upset. The following moment, the mother hands over a milk bottle with a nipple and feeds it to Tess. When it's time for Landlord to suck on the bottle, he refuses, which upsets the mother. The mother opens the cage, jumps inside the pit, and caresses Tess. She then goes to Landlord and blabber like an annoying baby. After that, the mother grabs Landlord and brings him to the room, with the television playing the nursing mother video, and she forces Landlord to suck on her two water taps. Tess grabs this opportunity to escape the pit, but on her way outside the basement, she steps on the tape measure, alerting the mother. Tess successfully reaches the basement, but unfortunately, the exit is locked. 
She immediately goes to the window, pounds it, and climbs herself to freedom. Luckily, a man helps her get out before the mother reaches her. The man instructs Tess to leave immediately, but she demands that they should help Landlord. Back in the mysterious hallways, Landlord grabs the opportunity to find the exit. Instead of finding the exit, Landlord finds another room in the basement. There he finds a bedridden man, and the man asks for some water. Landlord hands him a bottle of water. The man points to a drawer, and Landlord brings it over to him. Landlord continues to search the room, and finds a shelf of tape recordings with women's names written on the label. When he puts one tape on the player, it shows the gruesome recordings of the man abusing women. It's revealed that the bedridden man is the previous owner of the house, and he has been using the secret basement to lock up his victims. After the revelation, the bedridden man grabs a gun from the drawer and shoots himself in the head. Meanwhile, Tess goes out to the neighborhood, hoping to find help to save Landlord. She is assisted by police officers to go back to the house, but they are not convinced enough by Tess's report and claims. The officers receive another distress call and choose to respond to it, leaving Tess to take matters into her own hands. The night falls, and Tess waits patiently in her car and plans out her next move. She turns on the engine, and the mother busts open the front door to chase after her. Tess steps on the pedals and drives over to the mother without hesitation and successfully slams the creature onto the front porch. The mother grows weak and begins to lose consciousness, so Tess grabs this opportunity to go to the basement to save Landlord. But he accidentally shoots Tess with the gun. After the mistake, Landlord helps out Tess to stand up and carries her as they go outside the house. When they get out, they see that the mother left the front porch, so they immediately hurry to leave the house. While they are walking on the streets, the man who helped Tess earlier offers his place for the two of them to hide. While they are getting cozy at bonfire, the man reveals that the mother is a result of incest with the owner of the house and his victims. Years of the owner's abuse of his victim and daughters results in a creature that looks like a monster. Suddenly, the mother appears behind the man and strangles him to death. Tess and Landlord quickly run and reaches a tower. When they reach the top, they realize that they have nowhere else to go, and the mother is on her way to reach them. Hoping to save himself, Landlord pushes Tess out of the tower, but the mother jumps to save Tess. It seems like the mother genuinely cares for Tess, and she wants to take care of her until her death. After that, Landlord goes to the unconscious Tess and blurts out excuses for pushing her. When he tries to carry Tess, he also wakes up the mother. The mother lifts Landlord by his neck, gouges his eyes out, and crushes his skull, ending his renting life. The mother turns to Tess, hoping that she can take care of her again in the basement. However, Tess is holding a gun, and she points it at the mother's face. The mother shows her final affection with a kiss on Tess's forehead. Right after that, Tess blows off the mother's head with a bullet, ending her motherhood. The film ends with Tess struggling to walk on the streets, wanting to forget the horrific night. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.